Hello everybody and welcome back to another video of Heroes of the Storm. Today we're going to be continuing our tank series with Muradin. Um, now if I pull up the list, you can see Muradin is categorized in the offensive category. And that's just mainly due to how he positions in a fight. Instead of positioning uh, in a way to defend his team, he's instead disrupting the backline of the enemy team. So Anubarak and Diablo, they like diving into the enemies and messing them up. Muradin likes walking into them and just being an annoying presence there and then disengaging with his E if he has to. So Muradin works in almost every single matchup. You'll never really find a game where it's like, oh, we had a Muradin for a tank. Um, just because he's so cookie cutter he has a fantastic trait that lets him heal a, a disengage on a tank a uh, pretty good wave clear can be drafted for him uh, excellent camp clear a game changing ult an ult that makes him more tanky there's a lot going for Muradin um so you typically want to draft him though into someone in, into squishier backlines but you can draft him into almost anything and it'll work just fine anyways I'll explain a bunch more when we're in the game so let's hop right into it Alright, and we find ourselves on the Cursed Hollow today. That's the map name. Um, <clears throat> So, I will have a video coming out in two days where I play uh, one of the builds of Murden. Murden two, has two pretty cookie-cutter builds. One is what I call Assassin Murden, and that's the video that will come out tomorrow. It's meant to be uh, you sacrifice a little bit of health and healing for a little bit uh, more damage. Actually, a lot of hit more damage. Um, But... I am going to go and play the other build today, which is more of a tanky build, uh, where we focus around our W and kind of slowing the attack speed of enemies. So at level 1, uh, they're all good. I'm going to pick up third win in this particular game, because the way Meriden likes to play early game uh, is he doesn't like getting behind on XP. When he's behind, he's not nearly as good as he uh, has the capability to be. Uh, but he also loves to rotate through lanes. So during these fights, I want to try to get in on the uh, particular hero that I want is Murden, or, or uh, Zuljin, I should say. I am the Murden. And slow him down. If the Zuljin is auto-attacking me, that's best case scenario, because I'm, I'm the tank. I want to be the one tanking the damage for the team. Uh, looks like no one's going to fall in this little engagement here. I'm going to use my trait to heal up. Uh, that, it did look like their medic also was pretty low on mana. Um, or energy, rather. Yeah, she's pretty low. We have a Vala, who is a... Uh, w build, it looks like. W build Vala, so we don't have to worry about her dying. I know that that sounds terrible, but that's <laughs> the truth. We're going to go ahead and rotate in here on the Zul'jin, though. We do have our own Vala coming in, so I'll take the nice long flank. And as she comes in, we will be rolling in as well. Uh, able to land a nice Q on this man. And with the help of Vala, get enough damage out to finish him off. You'll notice in this game, I'm going to miss a bunch of Qs. That's because I'm not the best Murden in the world. Uh, but what separates the best Murden in the world from the worst is whether or not they can land their Q ability. Once again, we're going to just go ahead and rotate. Uh, try to help out the Vala to get a kill here. And this is a super overextended medic. There's another nice Q, and this is kind of how you want to be playing Murden in the early game, is just taking these uh, rotations to get picks. See, we're low on HP. As we rotate, our third wind will kick in, and we'll gain uh, ourselves full HP. <clears throat> Once again, uh, some heroes are in the bottom lane, so we could rotate there, but I also want to pay, some, pay a visit to our Kira, who... Uh, looks like they find two enemies here, and we'll get a kill on at least one of them uh, with a nice rotation. We love these fast rotations. Uh, yeah, a quick double kill, giving us a little bit of an XP lead. Uh, not much, because we're a little bit behind on soaking minions by the looks of things, but uh, and, and a camp. But still, those picks are really nice for us. Looks like the Zul'jin is starting to rotate, so I kind of want to catch him on the rotation. I'll ping for assistance here. Oh, I missed. Wub doesn't miss. This is BS. All right. Um, he is also a Q build Zuljin. That's something we need to be keeping in mind because Q build Zuljin melts tanks later in the game. I think it's around level thirteen or sixteen. 
Uh, once again, though, looking for these cheeky rotations. I kind of want to get in on the back line. Uh, our W, if you don't know on Murden, your W slows the attack speed uh, of enemy heroes. So that is really good versus Zul'jin, if you couldn't tell. And he's really... Zul'jin or even, even this kid are good pickups for me. Uh, it looks like Kira's going to finish her, him off. And you can see I'm comboing really nicely with the dive of Kira as... We play aggressively, we like uh, allies who play aggressively as well. Gonna try to do my best to peel uh, for my my healer, but we suck at peeling. Uh, well, not that we suck, we're just, compared to others, we're very bad. We lost objective there? Wait, oh my goodness, he's right, but how? How do we lose the objective? I'm confused. Um... Our W is actually able to reveal... Oh, I thought it was able to reveal who the real one is. It must have been someone else who was revealing it. And I would love to get a pick on the... On the Kael'thas here. If the Kira wanted to rotate, it doesn't look like she's quite going to yet. So now I think I gotta come in here and actually help her uh, to survive. Yeah, we'll get in on the Zul'jin. Just make sure he is slowed and not able to do what he loves to do. Our auto's crit, and you could go Skullcracker at 7. That's actually a pretty big talent um, that I pick in a lot of my games. But if I go Skullcracker with this, this build, I'm trading my one source of damage for a little bit more control. And, and control's great and all, but um, having that little bit extra damage is very nice on, on, on Muradin. Once again, we're just going to slow down this enemy team, make their rotations longer and their life difficult. And we can do this because we have our E. Our E is the disengage uh, ability that we have, making our life so much easier. Hopefully, the healer is able to get in here and stall. I'm going to actually have to use an engage uh, to stall this out a little bit longer. And we do actually lack some self-sustain. Oh, was that a passed bomb with a 6 overkill? Unfortunate. But we lack a little bit of self-sustain until about level 13. That's when we'll, we'll gain our self-sustain, uh, making our life so much easier. This Kira player is playing wonderfully for us. She's dodging so many skill shots, but unfortunately the Samro is able to pick up a kill. Uh, and Vala's getting a little bit of chip damage out, but she's kind of getting zoned out now by the whole enemy team. And it looks like we will lose, once again, a second objective. Um... But the game is progressing, and we like games that progress on Murden. Uh, we like getting to level, to, to mid game especially. Level 10 is going to be a huge power spike for us, regardless of your build. Uh, in this particular game, I think I'm going to go Haymaker just because I like Haymaker way better as an alt. But uh, Avatar is also very strong. We are approaching level 10 and on track to reach it before the enemy team. I'm going to ping for some assistance here. And if we can hit level 10 before uh, the enemy team does or before its objective spawns, that would be lovely. Once again, just kind of showing my presence here to hopefully scare the enemy team from taking the camp. Uh, or even enabling my allies to invade if they wanted. Um, we could even possibly kill this hero, but it doesn't look like the friendly team wants to do anything. And with uh, the build that I've gone, we have to just obey that. <laughs> we can't really... Um, pick and choose our engagements we kind of have to react to the enemy team a little bit more uh than we could if we were going assassin murden all righty yeah i love haymaker that's what what i think i'm gonna pick up uh so the range of your q and the range of haymaker uh or, or the range of your jump i should say are very similar to the point where you can press uh oh get out of here kid try to stop this uh zuljin from really healing up and I'll just get on him, make his life harder. There we go. Able to pick up a kill on him. But in doing so, what have I done? I've abandoned my whole team. And this is going to be a common theme you'll see when I play Muradin. Is I just, like I said before, I'm sacrificing my damage. Or or my peels, rather, for disruption and damage in the back line of the enemy team. Uh, unfortunately, Asmodan got bullied by just a Samuro. I'm a little bit surprised that that's what happened up there in the top lane. Uh, granted, Samuro had a camp, but I don't think Asmodan should have lost the whole building to that. Maybe he was low when he first went, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and a pick before this objective spawns would be absolutely lovely. 
Uh, I'm actually considering setting up a bush camp here with the help of my ally. Yeah, hopefully we can set up some sort of bush, uh, bush shenanigans with the enemy team rotating in. There's their tank though. Uh, I'm thinking this guy gets out and I don't have to press R. Or, or not that he gets out, he gets gets wrecked, I should say. And that should open us up for an easy capture on this objective. Um, Vala will start it. The friendly team wants to keep fighting here. Yeah, they do. Go ahead and send that guy out, which might have saved him, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but Kira, once again, landing her spells beautifully, uh, is helping us get these kills. If the friendly team wanted to dive a little more, uh, I would have tanked the tower, but... Uh, they got what they wanted done, and they're content with that by the looks of things. Alright, healing static. This talent is going to be so good with this particular build. As I mentioned before, uh, there is a another build than this, which in my opinion is slightly better. I probably should have tanked the tower a little bit longer for the friendly team, but I got a little selfish. Uh, and it will cost Kira her life, but we should get the building for it, so... Eh, whatever. Uh, we take those. Alright, Asmodee is also getting stacked very well thus far, by the looks of things. Um, we should have Kira up in time for this next objective, so we'll start this camp. Uh, enemy team is going to be taking that camp, and is this one up soon? Not for another minute, it looks like. As the tank, remember you want to be scouting for your team. So right now, uh, bushes are scary, and boss taking would be scary. And it looks like we might not even be able to rotate to this objective in time. Asmodean should have one stall. Um, no, no, no. We fight for this. Yeah, Asmodean will have one stall with his Q. Any day now. There it is. Uh, and he did actually get it. But it looks like there's actually a whole fight going on here. And enemy team is capturing that objective as we lose. Not one, but maybe two or three heroes. Um, gonna try to just haymaker the uh, low health enemies to their short demise. And then try to slow down the attack speed of the, the Zul'jin. Hopefully, as we've been picking up a kill there, that's very nice for us. But I do unfortunately miss uh, my ability. Please, the second kick heal. There, we're good. My W keep me alive there, as you can see. Very useful. So, we did trade three for two, and we lost the objective, which is quite unfortunate. Um, but we heal so much off of our Ws that it's not that big of a deal. Um, unfortunately, don't have my Haymaker up yet, and I did miss a uh, pretty easy-to-land Q, in my opinion. <clears throat> kind of want to send this guy deeper with an ult, but I'm, I'm cool with just continuing to do our best to defend versus the building uh, and push of this enemy team. Missing a point-blank Q there, unfortunately, and we're going to get chased down uh, a little bit by this enemy team. Not too hard, though. Hopefully send this guy back into the friendly team with a nice haymaker. That should be the end of Samuro. No, he uses his movement speed uh, to quickly get himself out. And I do get pulled back by the Johanna and miss two of my abilities. Uh, and this might be the end with Johanna's great damage, great slows. Uh, yeah, that was quite unfortunate series of events. I, The least favorite tank I have to tank up against is Johanna by far. Because she just has too much in her kit. The the self-giving shield is enough. Pop unstoppable on top of it. And it is very terrifying to deal with. Now. <clears throat> this talent tier that we are at. Gives us a little bit of build fluctuation. I think personally at this level. I'm going to go for imposing presence. Uh, just because the enemy team is more auto attack focused. But if they were more mage focused. Or even if these fights were happening a little quicker. You could go stone form. Uh, but I think Imposing Presence is going to be great for us in this particular instance. Hopefully one of these enemies will overstay their welcome. Doesn't quite look like they're going to, though. They're smart enough to uh, understand they need to disengage. And they're probably going to head towards boss, uh, which I would actually love to invade. So I'm going to ping for assistance there. I should be the one going in first um, to scout for the friendly team. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to ping this. We can technically steal this with an R. Oh, I should have just jumped in. Yeah, so we could technically steal it with an, with our RR. But it's very difficult to do. Unfortunately, we do lose uh, two allies and the boss once again. I 
think the medic's been the main problem for us, and I'm just slightly off at getting uh, on top of her. I'm gonna go ahead. I had this guy in my game last time, and I just I haven't been enjoying his chats, so we're gonna mute him. Alrighty. We'll probably end up losing mid, uh, but I'd rather defend the keep than, than mid, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and, and do. Um, you can see the, the Zul'jin, as I mentioned, with no mercy is going to be shredding me super quickly. Uh, and I don't think that there's a, a world where I save my ally here. Okay, okay, looks like she might get out. We, we did enough. And by we, I mean her. Uh, just continuing, though, to slow down these enemies. I did see a Kael'thas, yeah, so I wouldn't mind jumping in on the Kael'thas somewhere uh, if we had to. I really don't want to give a second objective here, but I don't think we have much of a choice. I'm going to try to get in on the uh, Zul'jin to press R and get him out of my game, but uh, <laughs> I was getting zoned off so hard by that enemy team. And now I'm taking a weird long flank uh, where I want to get in on the medic here, kind of booping her into safety again. But, regardless, we can take boss. I'll tank that for the friendly team. I, I, team, come on. Come here, boy. Come on. Come on, team. Come on. Let's go. Here we go. Come on. It's so pretty. It's a big, bad boss. Let's take it. There we go. Losing precious time. Um, and you can see... If you have more of a coordinated team, you can make these decisions. There's so many times I play with my buddies where we are ahead, like how we are now, and we just chase the enemy team, and then we go to boss just like we are now, and it's, it's going to be fine this time around. Uh, but sometimes we just take that 10 seconds too long. Sometimes it's 10 seconds. Sometimes it's one second difference where you take too long um, on going to boss, and you lose your opportunity. You miss your chance. Uh, the enemy team is going to be split, but they're also going to be 20, and I kind of want to see if anyone's on this camp here. Doesn't look like they are, so we're just going to rotate into the objective. Johanna is not at the objective either. I figured at least one would stall or uh, or go to the boss, and thankfully it was the Johanna. So in this fight, we should be fine uh, to do whatever we want. I really want to get around this medic and boop her back into the friendly team with a nice R. Um, once again, though, she just walks right on out. Maybe a Q? It doesn't doesn't matter. Kira's got it under control. All right. With that being said, we're gonna get the curse, and we want someone in each lane just to make sure that we're soaking up as much as we can. Uh, so it looks like Kira's heading top. I'll go mid. We got Vol in other lanes, and I will actually come and try to save my ally here to the best of our capability. But she did get absolutely murdered rather quickly. A uh, little bit of a sad sight to see. Especially considering Kira has been probably my most helpful ally thus far. Level 20, you can pick up really whatever you want. I think in this particular game, I'm going to go for Grand Slam and try to get a couple resets uh, for the kills. Hopefully, we can just get around this. Boom. Knock her back on our team. There's a quick reset on our R. And we have no worries whatsoever. I really want to be breaking these walls if we can. Um, because this would then open up the capability for me to tower dive. And not only tower dive, but tower dive, get out and live. So right here you can kind of see the range of our um haymaker really coming off to to help. Quote unquote help. As uh as we all are getting kind of wrecked by this enemy team. Hopefully we can still get out of here, though. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out. I think we're going to get hunted down. Ah, oh, he did. He saw us. All right, but we got our E up just in time, especially with a nice heal by our W, and we're able to sneak on out of there ever so uh, closely. Now, we have enough time to take our camp before the enemy team takes their boss, and I kind of want Vala to just take it by herself, and I'll just zone out here, kind of uh, helping out my Kira if she needs it at all. This could actually be a nice play um, if we're able to get in on the right enemies. Specifically, the Zul'jin is the one that I am thinking of. Try to boop him out to save my ally. There's a nice stun as well. Uh, but Zul'jin is just staying at the right amount of HP, keeping himself alive. 
Uh, we might die to minions here, barely staying alive. That was a Pyroblast, I think, that I heard. It might have got cancelled or already was tanked. Um, but unfortunately, with my health being so low, I don't think I can go back in and try to save my friendly Kira. We also lost mid in that engagement, and I wouldn't be surprised if the enemy team just goes right to boss. Gonna ping for a little bit of assistance here. Um, as I do think we could kill this guy. Oh, come on. Come on, team. Oh, he has so many abilities. Did he go... Okay, he went energy roll at level 7. Or level 4, that's why. But friendly team did pick up a kill mid lane. That's good. And with that kill, we should be able to take boss fairly uncontested if we don't lose our Asmodan here. Uh, gonna try to get in on one of these enemies, if not more than one. Oh, I just want a haymaker. One good haymaker could win us the game. Get out of here. We don't want your kind around these parts. Um, in doing that thing that Murden does, where we abandon our pack line to try to disrupt the enemy team. Oh, I kind of brought bad things back to the friendly team, though. Volo doing a really good job. I just got to make sure that this medic doesn't heal uh, the rest of her friendly team up all the way. Gonna boop him into our Vala with a nice Haymaker. Hopefully Vala can finish him off. Uh, another nice W out there to help me heal. And there's a good kill. Unfortunately, the whole time this has been happening, camp has been pushing. Uh, but I think we can take boss here. Uh, yeah, maybe not with Vala. Maybe not with Vala basing, though. Try to look for another pick. I'll take a cheeky back road. Oh, would you look at that? A wild Samuro has approached. There's no real reason for us to stay now that we can't take the boss. Uh, and with all these enemies still alive, uh, I for one don't want to stay. So we're going to boop this guy out of here, furthering him from our team. And just trying to press W to slow him and keep him away. That's an entirely wasted stim drone uh, by the looks of things. And with that, we might... Oh no, what a stun by Johanna. And I missed my heal on my W. Uh, Johanna with a really good R there to keep herself alive. And, and almost get me killed in the process. Um, Alright, that's a good slow. That's a good kill. We're gonna try to chase down. I'd imagine medics here. But I regret everything. Okay. Oh, that Johanna's severely out of mana. What a blink by our uh, friendly Malfurion. I just need one more second on my jump, but we're not going to get it up in time by the looks of things. Uh, we are additionally losing our building in the bot lane here, and I should really be helping the team out as they take this, uh, take this boss. Game is still very much a winnable game. Uh, I'm kind of saving both of my R's for... Uh, whenever this boss gets destroyed, so I can press R on a couple enemies and just secure uh, the boss. Like right here, we're going to go ahead and send Johanna out of here, hit her up with a stun, and we are good to go. Uh, additionally, this Kelfoss is on my nerves. Uh, we'll peel the healer off from her team. And you can see, look how far the healer's peeled. Unfortunately, though, a uh, friendly team is getting wrecked by their tank and bruiser. And not much more I can do there. We do have the boss coming in for some support. I will have a heal up in just a moment. I kind of want to save uh, any stuns I have for if this guy presses his R button like that. Unfortunately, Johannes here as well, though. And that will most likely be the end, especially with a nice set of abilities by Kael Thos. <clears throat> yeah, this game has just been so split weird. Uh, Kira coming in with a really nice R, though. Uh, will help kill this enemy team that's very overextended and without their healer as the healer was with Zul'jin killing the boss I believe which I run I'm kind of shocked that that boss uh, didn't even kill the building how stacked is Zul'jin he's got to be pretty stacked yeah that's 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 a pretty stacked Zul'jin unfortunately I've been doing my best though to make sure I'm the one tanking the damage I'm interested to see at the end of the game how much damage we have tanked and keep in mind that this build that I'm playing is, in my opinion, the lesser of the two builds. I think the other build is much better. Uh, but this build is practical in some scenarios. I think it's working out well this game. I don't know if the other build would have worked out better, though. Um, 
all things considered. We do have a lot of self-sustain, though. You can see we are uh, doing so much self-healing with uh, 60,000 on the board. We're going to uh, get up in time, by the way, before the enemy team's tank do. And we will have a curse to help us out. So hopefully we'll be able to capture that. Maybe even get a cheeky pick here uh, looking for haymakers wherever possible. Yeah, stay away from my team. Stay away from them. They're mine. All right, there's the curse. We're going to go ahead in on the Zul'jin once again. And uh, I actually was able to stun off the... Um, Reset city, baby. Able to stun off the stim drone by the healer of the enemy team. And this should be enough to boop the Kel'Thas back into our team. And he's able to fall. We have enough damage now to hopefully win the video game. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't react cr properly there. And the Johanna will be able to live. But uh, I don't think it's going to matter much at all. As this game should be closed out. In just a moment here by the help of the friendly team a nice route by Malfurion gets canceled out as well as my R gets canceled out just by Johanna's shenanigans and our healer got one shot by the looks of things I actually wasn't keeping the track of uh, his health bar sending him to the shadow realm sending him to the shadow realm there we go and finally ending this game what a hard-fought battle by both teams um and that's the rough way to play Meriden. That's definitely a, a very okay way to play him in uh, in that kind of matchup. But I, I personally, like I said, I love the Assassin Meriden, which will come out either. It's either going to come out today or in two days from now. You can take, see I tanked uh, 100,000 damage, which is less or more damage than their, their Zul'jin could pump out. You can see... Most of the Zul'jin's damage was, I believe, on top of me. And he was their highest damage. If they didn't have Johanna, who's able to pump out a stupid amount of damage and just live in our backline, I think we win that game much quicker. I'm going to go ahead and show you the build in this game as well. Uh, I didn't talk about it much in, in this one, but, uh, but I will. I'll show it to you now so you can play along at home. So, at level 1, we picked up 3rd win. Although, every option at level 1 is usable with this build. 3rd win, I just find to be the best. Especially with that early game rotation that you want to be doing. We then picked up Thunderburn at level 4. This is really not the best talent. But it helps out when it combos with our level 13 talent later. Um, Given the Axe at 7. I think I mentioned it in this game. As you trade out uh, more crowd control in the backline. For a little bit more damage. So, you kind of become... Uh, more of a nuisance or, or more of a, a threat than a nuisance, I should say. Uh, level 10, we pick up Haymaker. I said it's just my personal favorite alt out of the two. There's so much more plays you can make. You saw I was able to steal the boss uh, or rather confirm getting the boss with it at, uh, later in the game there. I was also able to pick up a bunch of resets with the level 20, getting like four quick kills uh, at the end game. Then at level 13, we pick up Healing Static. The reason that I went this whole build was because of Samuro. Samuro gives me so much healing comboed with Thunderburn and Healing Static. You heal for 5% of your maximum HP per enemy hero hit by Thunderclap. And this can happen twice. Um, which means you can get so much healing in a short burst of time, which is really strong. My level 16 and 20 talents uh, could have been swapped out with this build, but at 16, I went for Imposing Presence because of, once again, the Zul'jin and just his fearsome amount of damage and the Samuro. If either of those heroes attacked me once, they were significantly weaker for the next couple seconds. Um, and not only that, but the other pickups at this tier, um, the one I would have picked in this game would have been Stone Form, uh, which would have worked out well, but I don't think I would have got as much value as this uh, level 16 talent, which also helps proc our level 7 talent a bunch. And then level 20, um, I typically would have gone hardened skin, especially to help dodge the pyroblasts, but I wasn't really getting focused by those heroes, and instead I felt I needed the damage from Grand Slam uh, to get those kills and those resets. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Like I said, please watch the next video coming out where I play Assassin Murden. I'll show you the build that I go in that video as well, which it is this this one right here. I go Perfect Storm, Sledgehammer, Skullcracker, Haymaker, 
Bronzebeard Rage, Dwarf Launch, and Grand Slam as well. And that is a super fun game to go watch. So please check that out. Um, as it's either coming out, like I said, today or in two days. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about how to play Murden. Um, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.